Hi, I'm Sean from Poi AI. Agent Studio is our voice-first omni-channel platform for building and managing enterprise voice agents. We have built hundreds of voice agents that handle millions of customer service conversations for companies like PG&E, Maria, and Caesars Entertainment. It's already been used by Poi AI teams and trusted by clients across industries to launch voice agents at scale. Today, we want to show you how it works. Agent Studio is built on three core principles. First is platform first. You will always find the best model here. Speech recognition, LLMs, text to speech, all working together in one cohesive system. Second is proprietary at heart. You get access to Polyai's own fine-tuned models built specifically for contact center conversations. And third, is enterprise ready from regulatory compliance to global hosting and system integration. Agent Studio is designed to meet the demand of complex, high scale enterprise environments. Let's take a look at how it comes together and how you can start building with it. So when you're building an AI agent that's going to be having you know, thousands of conversations a day potentially with your customers, it's really important that you can trust the agent to stay on brand, to give accurate information, and of course, stay well within the guardrails that you've set for it. And I like to think about the process as being very similar, actually, to when you're onboarding any type of agent into your business, human or otherwise. The key ingredients are going to be the same either way. You need to give that agent training. You need to give it knowledge. You need to give it the things it needs to know about your business. But of course, you also need to give it instructions. What should it do in certain situations? How should it handle different types of query? And of course, finally, you need to let the agent know what's in scope and what's out of scope. What are the things you want to talk about? And what are the things that you absolutely do not want them to talk about over the phone? So let me show you how you can do that in our platform, Agent Studio, inside the knowledge base feature. So here you can see the agent's knowledge base. You can think of this area as a bit like the agent's brain, the area responsible for triaging those incoming questions from your customers. This is a low and no code interface, which allows you to provide the content that your agent needs to stay grounded in the details of your business. As you can see, you can add information directly through this interface, or alternatively, you can import your knowledge through PDFs or web content, or even synchronize with external knowledge sources. You'll then need to add the associated actions, those instructions that the agent needs in order to handle requests and triage them appropriately. Of course, we're talking about very often voice focused AIs, which means that we want to be able to hand off to contact centers, potentially send text messages, put somebody in a queue to speak to a human being, or of course, use functions to connect to back office data and handle requests autonomously. So what happens when a question is sent into the agent? Well, first, the system will decide upon the most appropriate topics based on their specific query. It will then collate the content and actions from that topic and decide on the best course of action to continue the conversation. That might include relaying information. It might include sending a text message with a link to further details online, or it could involve making function calls or running flows to allow for more complex interaction types. Let's move on to showing you a little bit more of this within flows. So we talked earlier on about the knowledge base and how it can be used to triage the incoming query and to give answers, but very often we want to do something a little bit more complicated and that's where flows come in. So here you can see we have uh, within our knowledge base here, a topic about reservations and somebody wanting to make a booking in a restaurant. Now we know we have to run through a whole host of, of other questions if this topic comes up. So we might need to find out what day somebody wants to come in, how many people's at four, um, do they have any special dietary requirements, is there a particular menu that they're looking to book for. And we could, if we wanted to, put this all into the actions, but we start to lose a little bit of control at that point over the order in which the questions will be asked, the um, the control over the ASR within, within the model as well. So instead, this is where flows come in. So we're going to take a look at this make booking flow. I'm going to jump into that here. And you can see something that looks a little bit more like a traditional flowchart. The difference is, and as I zoom in, you'll see that we're still using prompts here. So instead of having to write a whole bunch of code, we're using uh, prompts to gather information at each stage. This gives us more fine-grained control as we're able to specify the order in which we want to collect things 
and we're able to handle edge cases. One of the really, really cool things that we can do because we're using prompts here is we can actually look back at the conversation so far. So the LLM has access to the conversation history and we can tell it to look at that in order to uh, skip asking questions if it already knows the answer or if that information has already been provided earlier on within the conversation. So if we think about that restaurant booking example again, it's highly unlikely that somebody would call up and say, hey, I want to make a booking. Right? More likely they're going to call up and say, hey, I'd like to come in on Saturday. It's a couple of people and uh, we'd like to book for the Valentine's menu. In that particular scenario, we don't want to have a poor customer experience by immediately going back and asking them, sorry, what day was it you want to come in? What time did you want to come in? Which menu? If we've already been offered some of that information in the initial utterance. So this prompt here takes care of that for us. It forces the LLM to look back at the conversation that it's had so far. And if any of that data has been given explicitly, it's able to skip those questions. We also allow the user to change their mind within here. So this is where the configuration would live around somebody going, oh, actually, no, sorry, I, I, can we get in on Friday instead? That's absolutely fine. Until we reach this point where they've confirmed all of those details and we're locked in and moved to the next stage. So the flow gives us the control over making sure that we have all the answers to the things we need before moving on. So as we step through into the next portion of the prompt, we can see uh, that at this stage, we're now going to connect to an API and check for availability. This is where ultimately um, we might need to start writing a little bit of code. So we might want to connect to a third party system, maybe a table management system uh, in this particular case. And that code lives in functions. So you can click into any of these here, like the availability search or to temporarily lock a table. And I can sit in there and see the code that lives behind it. So this tool allows us to write these functions that can be called by the LLM when needed to go to make things happen in other systems. So for example, this one here is going to uh, check to see if there is any availability for the time, the date, the selected table type and the number of people requested earlier on. Now, if uh, coding is not something that's uh, something that you're used to, we're happy to work with you on that as well. So very often Poly AI customers will have us write a lot of these functions for them that they can then include in their flows or within their knowledge base too. So if we jump back out of that as well, you can see here, we continue to step through this flow until we get to the point where it's completed. And to get there, we might want to collect multiple extra pieces of information. So once we've checked, we have availability, great. Uh, I can get you in. I need to know your um, name. I need to know your surname. Maybe I want to send a text message to confirm it at that point as well. All of that can be done through these structured flows that still allow the LLM to customize the conversation but do it in a way that is more fine-grained control over purely giving everything to the LLM all in one go. So that's flows. Um, so we mentioned before, you get into these from the knowledge base, typically when that knowledge base article has grown to a certain size uh, or where it makes sense to jump into a more structured part of conversational flow. I'm going to speak a little bit about voice design and how you can control the quality of your voices and optimize for it within our platform. To ground the conversation, I'll throw in a fun stat from a study Forrester did in 2024 that was 59% of people hang up or ask to be handed off to a human within the first 30 seconds of a conversation. That's an incredibly short amount of time that you have to make a really strong first impression and present a really natural and human-like voice to start building trust and have the caller want to engage in that customer service interaction. And so I think this statistic is really representative of why voice is super important and crucial within the context of a good quality conversation. If we think about how we improve the quality of the voices and make sure they're the best they can be so we can optimize for that, we can sort of break it down into two pillars. The first being the quality of the text-to-speech voices themselves and the synthetic voices. And that ranges from the pre-training data of the model, having a lot of different voices and models to choose from, all the way to fine-tuning and customizing similarity and expressiveness of the voice itself. That's pillar one. Pillar two is all about the voice user experience. And that ranges from everything to the infrastructure so we can stream really low latency conversations all the way to audio management and dialogue design where you can make sure the voice speaking within the context of your interaction is empathetic, has the proper intonation and prosody and things like that. So let's dive into the platform and see how you can 
fine tune and invest in those two vectors to achieve an awesome quality voice. Let's jump into the platform and walk through how you would configure your voice. So in the agent voice page, this is everything to do with the text-to-speech models themselves. So you can select to add a voice here, and we have a multitude of voices you can choose from, our in-house voices, and also third-party providers. So here you can see some interesting functionality we have is around our multi-voice fleet capability. And what this lets you do is choose multiple voices to represent your brand. Using our agent memory feature, you can actually optimize which voice is used for certain users based on their preferences. But to dive deeper a little bit into these voices, let's see how we can improve actually the quality of the TTS. You can go into the advanced voice configurations here, select which model you would like to use, and even configure the stability and clarity and similarity. So these advanced functionalities let you fine tune and optimize the expressiveness, clarity, tone of the voice itself and regenerate it. Let's see how this sounds. Hi, I'm Ben and I love the weather today it is the utterance we can test. Hi, I'm Ben and I love the weather today. You know what? I don't think Ben sounded like he loved the weather that much. So let's see if we can make him a little bit more expressive. Hi, I'm Ben, and I love the weather today. He almost sounds a little bit too eager in this one, but let's go ahead with it. So this is how you would configure and customize the actual voice itself. And let's publish this. Now, the second pillar we spoke about around improving the quality of audio of your voice is on the audio management piece and the voice user experience design. So what you're looking at here is our audio management page. And this is essentially a cache storing all of the utterances that the agent has said. And there's two primary reasons we do this. One is this reduces latency because we can surf from the cache immediately um, instead of generating at runtime. The second piece is it lets us increase the stability of the voices themselves because we're continuing to serve the same utterance from the cache as opposed to playing into the non-deterministic nature of TTS models where every time you generate the audio, it might sound slightly different like we saw a little bit earlier. The other piece that's really wonderful about this cache is you can regenerate any of the utterances themselves. So this enables you and our internal team to fine tune and optimize every single thing the agent says and get an understanding of what the agent says most so you know how to best spend your time. So we can see an example of that here. We can regenerate the voice itself and we can actually fine tune how the voice sounds within the context of this utterance to make sure it's really empathetic and representative of the actual conversation. So let's go ahead and save that. And the other thing you'll notice is you can also import audio to the cache. So this enables you to add things like typing noises, background tracks, um, and we also enable you to import live person audio. So we have really close working relationships with our voice actors. And in some circumstances, we prefer to use human audio and mix that in with text to speech or synthetic generation as well. Another interesting piece is response control, which allows you to sort of fine tune the pronunciation of specific words using very advanced linguistic techniques. So the final piece of voice user experience design really comes down to the audio optimizations and the infrastructure themselves. So what we can do here is we can reduce the time it takes for the agent to respond so that it feels much more natural and we're reducing the user perceived latency. We can also enable bargain so it's really easy to interrupt the assistant and make conversations more fluid. And there's a number of other functionalities here we also have where you can make the voice sound much more natural with things like encouragement messages and back channeling just to make the entire conversation sound much more natural. Now that we've optimized our voice, let's give it a call and see how our agent sounds. It's such a pleasure to meet you. What are your thoughts on the weather today? You know, I don't really have any thoughts on the weather today because I'm recording a video inside. I understand you're recording a video today. That's great. I hope the weather doesn't interfere with your recording. 
What kind of video are you making? I'm making a video for Poly AI. What do you think about that? That's super cool. I'm excited to see your video for Poly AI. I hope the weather today is perfect for your recording. What kind of weather are you experiencing right now? <laughs> Thank you so much, Ben. It was great to speak with you. So that was our assistant and he had a wonderful voice. We could continue to regenerate it and play with it even more and fine tune it more to our liking. Um, but I think we'll leave it at that and let Ben have a rest. So thank you for discussing voice design with me. It's important to have the right tools to build a great agent, but it's also important to be able to validate that it's going to work in the real world with your real customers before you go live. That's why at Poly AI, we built agent studios, environments and versioning tools so that your team can build, test and deploy your agents with enterprise level confidence and speed. Inside agent studio, you get three isolated environments, sandbox, pre-release and live, each with its own phone number that you can call. This means that you're testing exactly what your customers will experience on a real phone line. For enterprise use cases, this level of realistic testing is critical. It helps catch unexpected edge cases before they ever reach a real customer. And if you spot something, you can fix it safely without risking what's in live. And that is where the draft comes in. Every new user flow, improvement or bug fix starts here. You can experiment freely and instantly chat with your latest version in seconds. It's your safe space to break things, refine them, and get them exactly right before putting them in front of a customer. In larger teams with lots of people working on the same agent, it's easy to lose track of what's changing. That's why every update you make in a draft is logged automatically. You always have a clear record of who did what, when, and why giving you full accountability and avoiding surprises during deployment. And to keep everyone in sync, the whole team gets notified as soon as edits happen, so you can coordinate work, prevent conflicts, and make sure nothing important gets lost. If you want to delete a draft, we'll warn you if someone else's work would be affected. And if you're ready to publish, You'll see exactly whose changes are included, so you can double check with them first. When you're happy with your updates, you can promote your draft to Sandbox for deeper testing. Chat with it, call it through the web interface or a real phone line to test every user path under real conditions. Once you're confident that it works as intended, you can promote it to pre-release for user acceptance testing. This step is key for enterprise deployments because it gives stakeholders and quality assurance teams a stable version to validate every scenario thoroughly before anything reaches customers. And when everyone has signed off on your changes, you can deploy it live. And afterwards, you can see exactly what's changing, no surprises. Every step in this flow is designed to catch issues early and protect the live customer experience. And if something ever does go wrong, you can roll back to the previous version instantly with zero downtime for your users. Finally, the project history keeps a complete and permanent record of everything. Every draft, every change, who made it and whether it was published or deleted. For enterprise grade agents, this means full traceability and peace of mind. You always know exactly how your agent has evolved over time. Let's Agent Studio be able to give you full control over voice automation. We understand that implementing AI for your mission critical business is a big step and we'll be the partner who work with you side by side to see it through. Reach out and we will show you more.